everyone. I was just about to plan for my vacation. I'm going to take a long flight to Europe. Trying to remember luggage and baggage things, you know. Browsing through hotel websites and so on. It's kind of hard to do it. But like me, you might want to go away somewhere and not just stay at home, right? So in this lesson, we are going to focus on the topic traveling experiences. Which language skills are we focusing on today? The main skill for today is reading. As usual, let's take a look at our learning objectives. What are you going to learn in this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify the main ideas in each paragraph using reading strategies, to find specific details and information in an internet blog, to express your feelings regarding the topic of the text. Okay, let's start our lesson with a simple warm-up activity. You will learn some vocabulary which are related to travelling. They are very important. Look at all the pictures here. Where would you like to go? A big city? A village? A mountain? The beach? A resort? Where are you going to stay? You need to book the room in advance. Next, what means of transportation are you going to use to go to that place? Train, car, motorcycle, caravan, aeroplane, ship, bus, on foot. And now, plan the activities you are going to do there for every day. Which of the activities here that you like? Now, can you identify what are these pictures? Can you match these words with the pictures? Did you get everything correct? Excellent! Now, match the vocabulary with the correct definition. A person who is travelling or visiting a place for pleasure. Tourists. Suitcases or bags that you carry when you are travelling. Baggage, or some people call it luggage. Look at this to help you find places. With this, you won't get lost. Map. Yes, a map. It can be a paper map or electronic map that you have on your mobile phone. An official document with your photos. You need it to go to a different country. Passport. You need this paper to get on a train or enter a museum. Ticket. Now, I would like to ask you, have you ever been abroad? I know not all of us have the opportunity to go abroad, but surely we dream about it. I haven't visited a lot of places, but I have really enjoyed the little travelling that I have done. Some of the things I love to do while travelling are going sightseeing, attending cultural events, and tasting the local cuisine. If I get the chance, I'll definitely travel a lot more in the future. Alright, let's go into our reading task. We are going to read a text related to travelling. So, can you guess what the text will be about? Yes, it's about Morocco. Do you know that Morocco is a country located in North Africa? 
The capital city is Rabat and the largest city is Casablanca. Other large cities include Marrakesh and Meknes. In the next activity, you are going to read an internet blog titled My Trip to Morocco by Amanda Edmonds. I want you to go through the text and identify the gist and main ideas of each paragraph. Working out the main idea of a text is an important skill because it helps us to better understand what we are reading. When determining the main idea, ask yourself, what is the main point the author wants me to know? There are four paragraphs in the blog post written by Amanda about her trip to Morocco. I suggest the first time you read something, read it quickly and don't use a dictionary. That's right, because if you use a dictionary at the initial stage of reading, you might miss out something very important. That thing is called context. Many times in your own language, when you read something, you don't understand all of the words. You don't always go for a dictionary. You continue reading the other words around it and you find out what that word means. So that's the first step of our reading strategies today. How do you read quickly? Just skim the text and focus on the important words to get the general idea in the paragraph. Let's do the first paragraph together. You are going to read the paragraph 1 at a pretty fast pace. As you read, write down the words or phrases which you feel are important for you to gauge an overall understanding of the paragraph. Just select the words or the phrases which tell you what paragraph 1 is about. Okay? Are you ready? Let's begin. Right, have you selected your words or phrases? I have selected six. What about you? Here is my selection. Arrive, you reach at the place. Couldn't wait, so excited. Dump my bags. Went out. Enjoying the sights. I wasn't looking or I didn't notice. Alright, okay, now if I give you Two choices of headlines. Which one do you think is the most suitable headline for the text? Number one, first impressions. Or number two, things to avoid. Impressions is the way that something seems, looks or feels to a person, while avoid is to stay away or prevent something from happening. Yes! First impression is a matching headline for this paragraph because the main idea of this text is related to the author's feelings and experience when, we, when she first arrived at that place. Other than identifying the important words in a text, title and headings can also help us determine the main ideas. For example, in the next paragraph, the heading is gestures and handiwork. What is gesture? Gesture is a movement of part of the body, especially a hand or the head, to express an idea or meaning. Meanwhile, handiwork means the work done skillfully with the hands. So with that, we can assume the main idea of this paragraph. It's a good start, but we'll need to use some other strategies to be more accurate. 
Now read quickly to find the gist of the text. For this paragraph, I have underlined these phrases Henna tattoos A work of art Hail taxis Point a finger Based on these four phrases, I get to a conclusion that the main idea of this paragraph is about the cultural elements of the Moroccan people related to gestures and creative handiwork of the local people. Do you agree with the headline given to the text? Another strategy that can help you determine the main idea is look for repeated keywords or ideas. Let's practice this strategy with the next paragraph. This paragraph doesn't have topic or concluding sentences because it's not an information text. But if we read this text carefully, we can start to see that an idea is repeated. Look at the phrases I've underlined. I had the time of my life. Sahara Desert. Definitely worth it. Enormous sand dunes. So many stars. It was magical. Wonderful life. Roaming the desert and sleeping under the star. The main idea seems to be that Amanda was so thrilled and excited to experience the unique trip to Sahara Desert. So, if I give you two choices of headline, which one do you think is more suitable for the paragraph? A scary experience or a natural delight? Yes, the answer is a natural delight. The last strategy for working out the main idea of a passage is to look at the topic sentence and the concluding sentence. A topic sentence is the first sentence of a paragraph and provides the main idea. The last sentence of a paragraph is usually the concluding sentence and it can also provide clues to the main idea. Now, before reading the fourth paragraph, let me show you the first and last sentence of the passage and you have to deduce the overall idea of the paragraph. First sentence, a few days later, my dream came true and I got the chance to go camel riding, but it didn't really live up to my expectations. And last sentence, then it crossed my mind that I was feeling seasick in the middle of the desert. These two sentences tell us that the paragraph will probably about Amanda's disappointing experience when going on camel riding at Morocco. Let's confirm our prediction by quickly reading the whole paragraph. Based on the phrases, isn't a piece of cake, struggle, felt dizzy, if we could stop, 
and seasick. We can see that the topic and concluding sentences match with the text heading and important words and phrases from the passage. So that's the strategies to help you determine the main ideas in a text. All these strategies are important to know as not all strategies will always work. Besides, using multiple strategies together will help us build more accurate main ideas. Now, let's read the text again. This time, you have to understand what you are reading. First paragraph. I arrived at Marrakesh Airport where I met my friend Emily who arrived the previous day. She's been to Morocco many times and I couldn't wait for her to show me around to take her to the interesting places in Morocco. Emily is French, which is cool because they speak Arabic, French and Berber in Morocco. These are the languages they use there. As soon as I dumped my bags in the hotel room, we went out to grab a bite, means to get something to eat. We went to a souk, which is an open-air market by day, but at night, it turns into a bustling, busy and full of activities. Open-air restaurant with loads of food stalls. It was full of life and everything smelled delicious. I was enjoying the sights as we were walking through the crowd eating our kebabs. And I didn't notice, means I didn't realize, a man yelling at me. He was a snake charmer, an entertainer who makes snake move by playing music. He was a snake charmer and I almost stepped on his cobra because I was looking where I was going. You know, when you are fascinated by something or a new place, you become unaware of what is happening around you. Alright now, a quick check on your comprehension of the passage. Did Amanda and Emily arrive at Marrakesh Airport on the same day? No, they didn't. Was Amanda hungry after she checked in at the hotel? Yes, she was. Which words or phrases in the text match with the following definition? Put something somewhere quickly and carelessly. Dumb. Get a small meal. Grab a bite. Moving on to the second paragraph. I had seen many people the previous night with henna tattoos on their hands. So I asked Emily where I could get one. So it was back to the soup where a little old lady turned my hands into a work of art. She explained that the tattoos would go away or would fade two weeks later. Afterwards, while walking around the city, I noticed or I realised how some people hail taxis the way they call taxis. They don't stick out their hand but they point a finger or even two fingers. I asked Emily why they did that and she explained that it was a way to tell the taxi driver how many people need a lift, needed transport. Later, we needed a taxi to get back to the hotel. So I gave it a try. We found a taxi pretty quickly, so I guess it worked fine. A quick check of your understanding. How long does a henna tattoo usually last? Two weeks. Was Amanda used to the way people in Morocco hail taxis? No, she wasn't. Next, the third paragraph. I was a bit nervous about our next outing, but as it turned out, I had the time of my life. We went on a two-day 4x4, this is the short term for four-wheel drive, excursion, means a short trip to Ek Chebi. This is a place in the Sahara Desert and it took us most, most of the day to arrive there. 
but it was definitely worth it. We watched the sun setting over enormous, means extremely large sand dunes, hills of sand in the desert. Then the real show started as the stars come out and fill the entire sky. Living in the city, I had never seen so many stars. It was magical. I fell asleep that night imagining how wonderful life as a Bedouin might be. Roaming means walking or travelling, the desert, on camels and sleeping in tents under the stars. Bedouin are the Arab nomads. They move from one place to another rather than living in one place all of the time. So, how did Amanda feel about the excursion to El Chebi? She felt nervous. Where is El Chebi? In the Sahara Desert. How many days did Amanda spend in El Chebi? Two days. Did she have a good time there? Yes, she did. And for the last paragraph. A few days later, my dream came true and I got the chance to go camel riding but it didn't really live up to my expectations. Getting on a camel isn't exactly as a piece of cake. It's not easy but after a bit of a struggle, means using effort, I managed to get up there. I called my camel Goofy because he had huge teeth. We, ro we rode off but after a while, I felt dizzy and asked the guide, the guide is a person who showed tourists places of interest, Moha, if we could stop. Moha told me not to worry as I would get used to it, we'll get familiar. He also said that camels are known as sheep of the desert. Then it crossed my mind that I was feeling seasick, feeling like vomiting in the middle of the desert. Alright, let's check your understanding. What is Amanda's dream? To go camel riding. What did she ask the guide to do? She asked him if they could stop. What did she call the camel she rode? Goofy. What are camels known as? Ships of the desert. Now, we are going to identify specific information in the text. We need to scan the text. Scanning is when you move your eyes over a text to locate specific details like figures, names or places. Some tips for scanning. Think about the information you are looking for. Only pay attention to the word or phrase you are looking for. Move your eyes quickly across the page until you find the information. Let's see an example of scanning in action. Read the following questions. These are the information that we are looking for. Find the answers from the text. Question 1. Why was Emily a useful person to visit Morocco with? Now look at the text. So the answer is because she had been to Morocco many times and because she spoke French. Question 2. What did Amanda eat on her first night in Marrakesh? She ate kebab. Question 3. Why did a man yell at Amanda? Here's where you can find the answer. because she almost stepped on his cobra. For the next paragraph, question 1. Where did Amanda go to get henna tattoo? Now look at the text.
she went to the souk. Question 2. How many fingers Amanda hold up to hail a taxi? Answer, she held up two fingers. Next questions. How long did it take the girls to get to El Chebi? It took them most of the day. We've come to the end of our session for these lessons. Let's recap our lesson for today. In the beginning, we revised on some vocabulary related to travelling. For example, different types of accommodation, transportations and activities you do when you go travelling. Then, we had a lesson on reading strategies on how to identify the gist and main idea of each paragraph. After that, we find specific information and details from the text. And lastly, we elaborate on the topic of the text by doing a speaking activity. Well done for achieving the learning objectives of this lesson. I hope you had a good time with me as I really enjoyed teaching you today.